Okay, this is Around the House with Kay and Tom. Today I am going to make a chocolate pie, old-fashioned chocolate pie. And quite a number of years since I have made one, so we will get started. Our ingredients, ingredients will be carnation evaporated milk, four eggs, cup and a half of sugar, vanilla flavoring, cocoa, Hershey's cocoa, four tablespoons full of just plain flour, um, saffronizing flour, and a half a stick of butter. First thing we have to do is I'm going to make the pie crust. I am using um, Pillsbury pie crust, comes two in a box, and you need to take one out and let it get room temperature. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a glass pie pan, just a nine inch. What we're going to do is just take a nine inch uh, glass Pyrex pan and we're going to put the um, pie crust in that and cook that first. So let's get started. You have to let your pie crust be room temperature. And then you just roll it out. Let me fix this so you can see this better. You just sort of mash it down in the in the pie pan, so it gets down in the the groove of the plate. And take your time for the simple reason. This will tear if, you, if you're in too big of a hurry. And if you don't get it mashed in there, when it's cooking, it'll just all come up away from the um, pot plate. And it says if you have any that's lapped over, just to sort of push it back. So it's all on the rim of the uh, pie plate. And they did recommend using a glass pie plate. And what I'm going to do is get, I'm going to take a fork and I'm just going to sort of mash it down. Now I've seen my mother take a spoon and mash it down. I've seen people take it and pinch it up a little bit so it will be in a little pinch looking thing. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do to this to make the the actual pie crust look good. That's usually the best part of it anyway because it's crunchy. I think that's about as good as I can get it. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to bake this.
Okay, it says to preheat this. First off, we have to cut it on. Preheat it to 450. Okay. And I had preheated it before, so now it's telling me that it is actually already at 450, but usually it takes two or three minutes for it to get to 450. And we're going to cook it for, let's just say, 10 minutes to start off with. And we definitely want it on bake. As you can see, it is now on bake. And we're going to put it for 10 minutes. It might take a little bit more. I'm not sure, but we'll see. So we put it in there and we tell it to start. And as you can see, it is in there. And we're going to give it 10 minutes and see what it looks like. As you can see, it is getting brown on one side, a little bit on the other. It tells me I've got 3 minutes and 14 seconds left. And so we'll keep cooking it just a little bit. And then we'll be ready to put the filling in it after it cools. As you can see, it did turn a pretty brown all the way around the edges. So I'm going to let that cool. And then I'm going to fix the pie filling. And maybe by the time it gets, I get the pie filling, pie filling done, it will be ready for me to put it in there. So what we do now in a large bowl, we will combine the sugar, which is a cup and a half of sugar. What well, did the sugar, the cocoa, the flour? The milk, there's the flour. The flour was, um, we, we put in uh, four tablespoons full of flour. We used four tablespoons full of um, cocoa. And then we're going to get this stirred up together first before we do anything else. Blend it in. going to do, we're going to add the eggs and the milk. What we have to do is we have to separate the eggs. And if you don't know how to separate the eggs, let me just show you. Crack your egg, hold it over a bowl, and all you got to do is be gentle. And all you're going to do is flip your egg yolk from one side to the other. And when you get it, the white off, there's your egg. And you put it in your bowl over here. So we're going to do this four times. I know you can actually buy, um, whoops, yeah, I really made a mess. Hold on a second. Let me get this egg yolk out of here.
there we go. That happens. That is nothing unusual for something like that to happen. But I do know you can go and buy a egg separator. And I really thought Tom had one here, but if he does, I couldn't find it. So we'll just do it the old-fashioned way and see if I can't do better this go round. Oh, yes. This one's a lot better. And we've got four eggs. And what we'll do now is that we will just set the egg whites on this side for a moment. And we'll sort of beat this up just a, a little bit. And we need to add our vanilla flavoring, which is a teaspoonful. We need um, two teaspoons full. Of vanilla flavoring. Here's the teaspoon. Let's get the vanilla flavoring. So I need two of these. Hold on, it. I got to get a new bottle. I didn't have any idea that that was empty like that, but that's okay. We need two teaspoons full, and that wasn't even... Yeah, this is a teaspoon. There's one. There's two. So you sort of mix that up. And then we're going to take this can of carnation milk, evaporated milk, and just blend that in there. Just take your time and just stir it because if you put it all in there at one time and try to stir it, it will be very, very lumpy. And we don't want our chocolate to be lumpy. So let's get this mixed up. Well, I've got it just about mixed up good. I'll keep stirring it just for a few minutes. Some people use the dark chocolate. This is just plain uh, cocoa. It's not on um, the dark. It's just the just the regular cocoa. I like it either way, but this just happens to be what I had. And as you can see, it's it's really mixed together good. So what we do now is we pour it in this pot. These are zero. to take it over here to the stove and I'm gonna put it on the eye and we're just gonna let it cook and it says to add the butter when you get ready to cook it so I got a half a stick of butter so just what I did is I cut the butter up in little like four little hunks and it said that the butter will melt as this gets hot. So, let's go see. Okay, I now have it on the stove and I've got my eye on. And it said to cut the eye on medium to high and to stir it because it will have a tendency to stick. 
and to burn. So we'll just stand here and we will stir this. And as you can see, the butter hasn't even started to melt yet. I just put it on the eye. So let's get it going. It shouldn't take it long to warm up. And when it gets thick, we will pour it in the pie shell. Then we'll fix the meringue to go on top. And we'll have chocolate pie tonight. The butter is melting some. If you can see that, you can see that it's sort of coming apart. It smells like a hot chocolate mix that you would be ready to drink. We're going to cook this and let it get firm. lay my whisk out here. I didn't know whether or not I was going to need that to keep it stirred or not. If I can remember correctly after all these years, I think all you have to do is just sort of watch it and keep it stirred. Just so it doesn't stick to the bottom. This is Around the House with Kay and Tom. I'd like for you to, if you would, to subscribe to my channel and give me your comments. I really appreciate them. Anything you think you would like to see me cook, old-fashioned way. But the only thing so far I have used is the cooker, the Ninja cooker over here. Um, I know I have people that keeps asking me, when are you going to use Tom's Ninja Cookers? Well, that day will come. But in the meantime, I am thoroughly enjoying this right here. And I hope you are too. Seems like some things turn out good and some things it's like, well, next time I think I'm going to do something a little different. As you can see, the butter is beginning to melt. And no, I'm not going to stick my finger in there and see if it's melt. I mean, if it's warm. We're just going to wait until it starts. When it gets this, this consistency that you think that's what you want in your pie. You want it uh, stiff enough so when you pie, pour it in your pie shell and you put the meringue on it, that when you slice it, you've got a slice of pie and not a slice of chocolate pudding. Good thing about this, a chocolate pie, is you can always keep it in the refrigerator for a couple of days. And I know people that are working sometimes don't have time to do this, but it sure is good. And I still say homemade cooking is better than going and getting it out of a box. But, you do the best you can do. I have enjoyed continuing keeping Tom's around the house going. Ah, now the butter's all melted. So 
So I'm going to just keep stirring it until it starts to thicken up. It is beginning to thicken up. So it won't be long now because it's not half as runny as it was. I just want to keep stirring it because I don't want it to be lumpy. Won't be long before we'll be pouring it in our lovely pie shell. I forgot just how stiff you're supposed to let it be. So let's just hope that we'll get it right, that it will be Boy, it is really thickening up now. That looks like just like pudding. Let's let it cook just a little bit more. Okay, I do believe that it's thick enough. So I'm going to in this pie shell and we'll soon see whether or not I should have cooked it just a little bit more yep the pie shell is cool so let's just see what it does I'm going to pour it in this pie shell. And like I say, I sure hope I got it thick enough. But one thing about it, if it's not thick enough that you can slice it and have it like a pure slice of pie, you can always take a spoon and eat it like chocolate pudding. But I think we will have a very good pie. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let this sit here and just cool a little bit. And I'm going to fix the meringue to go on top of it. And then we'll put it back in the oven and let the meringue cook just a few minutes. And we'll see what we have. So what I'm going to do now for the, is I'm going to beat up my egg whites. over that I have four teaspoons full of sugar ever how many eggs you use you should use that many teaspoons full of sugar and you should use just a little bit of vanilla flavoring you can use a half a teaspoon a fourth it really it's really no rhyme or reason it recipe just said vanilla flavoring it didn't say a half a teaspoon fourth teaspoon or anything so I guess that's just whatever you want to use and I'll
Okay, I think this is in a piece. So we will get up and stop that. And we'll bring our pie over here to us. And it said to let the pie cool about 10 minutes before you uh, put the filling on it, which I think it has cooled that long. So all you got to do is sort of spread it on the pie. Tell you a little secret about putting meringue on a pie. Always take the meringue and make sure it touches the pie shell all the way around. Because if not, when you put it in the oven to brown it a little bit, believe it or not, this, ram this meringue will come away from this pie. And you see a lot of pies that the meringue is like pulled away from the sides. That's because they didn't take the time to make sure that the meringue was touching the pie shell. So what you do is you just sort of swirl it up a little bit, makes it look pretty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it back in the oven and let it cook just long enough to brown the meringue. Okay. Let's do that. Got the pie in the uh, little ninja stove. We're going to start it. We're going to... Sorry about that. I need to have cleared this off first. Sorry about it. Let's get that back. We're going to set it at 350. I should... Yeah, let's just do the power. And then we'll set it at 350. We're going to set it for 10 minutes. And we're going to hit start. Now you have to watch this simply because it will, sometimes depends on your oven, it will it will brown before you know it and you will have a burnt pie crust I mean a meringue on your pie I do hope I can get this camera where you can see this cooking it says it is preheating so I'll give it just a second I definitely thought it was already hot enough but Evidently it wasn't. Okay, now it's going to do countdown. It's got it's at 350, and like I say, you really have to sort of watch this. So I wouldn't be walking away from it. I have done that before, and I have had a burnt pie crust, not pie crust, meringue. Some people do turn it on broil because that's all we're trying to do is get the meringue brown looking. But it really can burn real quick when you've got it on broil. It doesn't take but a few minutes for this to, to cook and get turned brown. I definitely hope you can see this now because I'm getting ready to take it out. I want you to see how pretty it is. 
So we're going to set it over here so I can get a better picture of it for you. So now I have a chocolate pie. The meringue is nice and brown. Now we're going to have to let it cool just a little bit before I can slice it. But I will come back and let you see me slice a piece of this pie. And again, this is Around the House with Kay and Tom. I hope you enjoyed this chocolate pie. And uh, with the video, I'm the one that's going to enjoy the chocolate pie. And uh, give me your um, comments. Come back to see me again, and please subscribe to Around the House with Kay and Tom. Until next time, have a good night. I hope you can see this pie real good, and do come back to see me again, Around the House with Kay and Tom. I probably should have let it cool just a little bit more before I cut it, but it still is firm, and this is what it looks like. Well, let me redo this. Here we go. This is what it looks like on a plate. And it did. I think it turned out quite well, but like I say, I really should have let it cool just a little bit more because it seems to be firming up the more it gets cool. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. I think I'm going to sit down and have me a slice of pie. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Don't forget to join my channel, Kay and Tom, Around the House. Good night.